have three tables. The first one will be the normal VI characteristics of a gun dial. Okay. So for this, we'll just switch on the gun power supply. Okay. We can give a modulating amplitude. Okay. Now. There are two modes, the V mode and the C mode. This is the current and this is the voltage. So, we will gradually increase the run bias voltage and we will note the corresponding current. As we can see that, if we see the graph, as we will go on increasing the voltage, the current will gradually rise, then it will reach a peak point, then it will decrease, which is the negative resistance region. Okay. And practically we do not have the provision of going up to the valley point. So we will have the graph up to a point say like this. So the entire graph will be like this. Okay. The first plot, for the first plot we will increase the gun bias voltage and take corresponding current readings so that we will have a V and I plot. Okay. This is the first graph. Okay, so this is the second table and this will vary the operating frequency keeping the modulating amplitude to be zero so the only the carrier is passed through the waveguide and we'll note the DC bias of the carrier. Okay, so as we can see that we have fixed it at a particular frequency and from the multimeter we are noting the DC level of the signal. Okay, so this is one set of readings. Then our next set of reading will come through changing the operating frequency, and in a similar way, we'll note the DC level of the signal. So this is all about the second table, and the most important part is that you do not apply any modulating signal to it. Only the carrier should pass through the waveguide. So this is the last part of this experiment and in this we have to apply a modulating signal. Okay, we can fix it to any arbitrary value. Along with it we have to change the modulating frequency and ensure that the needle of the VHWR meter does not go out of range. And in this part we will fix the gun bias voltage at 9.5 cell. 9.5 and in this we have to find at we have to fix a particular frequency and obtain the output power at the VSWR meter. So as we can see that there is a fixed particular frequency out here and for that the corresponding output power is this is at minus 40 dB and as I have said before this is the second last scale from the bottom and this is the second division so minus 40 and minus 2 this is minus 42 dB okay and now I am changing the operating frequency and as we can see that the output power is changing okay so for this particular frequency we have to note the frequency and the output power is minus 40 and there are 5 divisions out here so it is minus 45 dB so like this we have to go on changing the operating frequency and for every frequency we will get output power and this is the last table